Right, so welcome back to another video. Um, and today, what I wanted to talk about was uh, another video about secondhand clothing. Shocking, I know. Um, but today, I actually wanted to talk about ways to tell if something is good quality. That doesn't even make sense. What am I waffling about? Basically, I'm going to be explaining what three ways I look at to tell if something is worth the price I am looking for. So, it's three, but I'll expand on them a bit. So, to start off with, this is mainly when I'm doing it in person, because obviously doing it in person is a lot easier to define whether something is worth it than online, because obviously, when it's a seller as well, just an independent seller, it's hard to know whether they're taking um, realistic photos, whether they're hiding anything, and especially when you're buying stuff online, I personally don't recommend it buying it from independent sellers, unless they have a load of good reviews, and that's just a bias standpoint that I stand by. Because I don't trust people. Like, photos can be manipulated. People can say it's legitimate and they can show all this stuff and it doesn't mean it is. Um, and I just prefer... I'm a charity shop guy and car boot sale guy. And I go vintage shopping a bit. And it's, it's more to do with specific things which I look out for. Now, there are certain brands in shops which you do want to look out for which are usually seem a bit more dubious to me which i personally wouldn't take the risk on as much so a lot of times it's huge companies like some of the biggest companies in the world a massive one that gets faked a lot is hugo boss same thing with ralph lauren um, and i'm always very wary on them because you can get some clothes of theirs which where you can see like it looks good quality uh the tags look semi decent to what they should be but they change the tags quite often and there's just so much of it that you think, how can this all be real? Like, and you do think, I'm not sure on how good a quality this is. Like, I have previously been bought certain stuff. I won't say by who, but it's like, me personally, I wouldn't have bought it because I'm not 100% genuality. Like, if it's genuine or not, mainly because of, like, the feel of it and stuff, which I'm going to go through now. But Nike get faked a lot as well, same with Adidas. But usually with those stuff, you can easily tell, to be honest with you, through tags and stuff like that. But the three main ways which I would talk about is, firstly, it's labels with me. Like, labels are one of the most important things because they're easily referenceable. And if you can even find the exact product online and it looks the same with same sort of, like, uh, labels and stuff like that, then you should be good, right? And it's quite hard to do that when you're in a shop. It's quite busy and sometimes it can be hard. Like, I don't know a lot of the times if some... Sometimes I do regret buying stuff. Like, I've bought stuff in the past where I get home and I think this is like 50-50 chance of this being fake and that is not what you want like it's not what you want to buy because you're spending like six six seven pound and you don't know whether it's real and then you get home and you're just like oh, i don't even want to wear this now because it just feels weird because i don't know if it's real or not labels is a thing which you can compare online so you can genuinely see labels see how different the quality is um of the labels and the stitching and stuff and there's loads of videos to show people how different brands do their stuff and everything like that. So it's quite a good one to look out for. Another one which I'd say is when places or people, like online especially, try and sell stuff as new. And they say, oh, it was this size and I got the size wrong. And now I can't wear it. And here's all the receipts and stuff and with all the tags. I get very wary of that because either there's, there's some sort of dodgy thing going on there in my personal opinion. Because why? Why are you selling me this when you could have returned it? You've got the receipt. You could return it for full price when you're giving me like 20 to 30% off. And you're showing me this receipt that you've got and you could return it and get all your money back. Instead, you want to sell it to me where you're going to have to post it to me. I'm going to have to send you money and you're going to get about half of the money that you bought it for. Does that make sense? Like, How does that compute in anyone's head that that would be okay? So that is something which I would look out for because there's always something a bit iffy going on there. I'm not saying it's fake at all, but there's something always like, uh, why couldn't you just return it and get your money back? Uh, you know what I mean? That's that's the thing with me with that situation. Another thing, now the last thing, which in my opinion is the easiest thing to tell after a while. I've been doing this for years, so I kind of know is the way the clothing fits and feels. Now, clothing quality is one of the most important parts. So you can put on a t-shirt and the certain fit, you can tell whether that is how it should look or whether someone's just like got up itself and it doesn't look, it's not genuine, you know what I mean? And like, you can tell, you can just tell. Like, 
by the feel of stuff if it's really not soft and like rough and stuff like that it's really unlikely that you can tell the same thing with screen prints as well the like the quality of the brand plus like the quality of what the screen print should be comparatively to what it actually is in person and especially if you bought a product by them before you should be able to tell with that quality and the difference there in my opinion that's what i personally think uh now a lot of stuff can be quite hard and in the moment you can think oh this is a good idea when it's not but it is something worth noting that these specific ways which you can tell on something's legitimacy is very important to know because me personally i can take a lot of risks because i don't mind i'm giving money to charity anyway it doesn't really bother me i'd rather the charity have it i might i'm never going to go back to a charity shop and say can i have a refund uh, unless something is wrong with it that they didn't tell me was wrong with it beforehand if it's my own fault and i bought it i'm not taking money from a charity it's not my thing i people that do that's cool um but i personally don't want to do that so i'll just leave it in my closet and it will just stay there forever because i'm just like oh, i don't like this because it's like it feels weird and it's not as what i thought it would be so in my opinion that's that's my thing i i need to know like verifiably that it's okay like even behind me like there i've got stuff which i think I've never even worn that because to me it just feels like it's not real because I've got other stuff from the brand um, I've got different stuff that I, I know I can verify against and it just doesn't meet the standard which I'd like it to to be honest with you like it's it's really hard to say if something is genuinely real or not based on like five minutes in a charity shop and you're like oh, I've got to get it now otherwise it's going to be gone and I've learned kind of not to do that and kind of like, oh, if, it, if I'm not sure, I'll just leave it. Because I know there'll be something else coming up later. So, if I was someone that wasn't 100% sure, if I'm not 75% sure it's real, I won't I won't buy it anymore. And that was like, I, did, I didn't used to do that even like five months ago. I'd still just buy it anyway and think, oh no. And then I'd just rack up loads of stuff and I'd just think, oh, I've made a mistake here. But sometimes fabrics and stuff can get messed up, especially in like vintage shops and stuff because they've been washed and worn so many times. It can be a bit hard to distinguish is, is this the quality? Is this the correct labeling? Because they've been battling around quite a lot. And then even then I'd be cautious on taking the quality of the clothing then because you've got to factor that into the price as well. Um, and it's just, it's really iffy and it comes with experience more. Like you, you do get to know what is likely to be real what brands are faked more and what ones are more likely to genuinely be real like i've made so many mistakes in my time like oh the camera just moved um i've made so many mistakes in my time genuinely in buying clothes it's really sometimes it's really hard and you think oh this is this is good and then you get home and you do a bit more research and you think oh no i've made a mistake and that's okay like as long as you're not spending like 20 pound on a t-shirt from a charity shop or a vintage shop or something i wouldn't stress about it too much like there's always other stuff and for me personally money's not the most important thing it's just about um i like fashion i like clothes but i don't have the money to keep up with it like i love everything to do with fashion and clothes like i go into liberty in london when i go london and i just look around i can't afford any of it like because it's so expensive but I, I love it and I love fashion and I love everything to do with that. And I do also make clothes as well. Not make them, but like I have a brand which I, well, it's not a brand. It's like I make my own clothes. So what I'll do is I'll go to like a vintage shop because vintage shops are class for blank t-shirts. Especially good quality ones like um, Blue Harbour, which is m and sort of brand. Great quality t-shirts. And then I'll just get my fabric paint, paint on them set it with the iron and it looks sick like genuinely i'm gassed when it does but it just takes so long to do and if anyone wants to see any of it sometimes i'll probably put some on the instagram page i've made for it but i want it to look good first i don't just want to put any old rubbish on there because my dream was always to be a fashion designer and my life just took me differently and i'm only 19 and me saying that i can't do something it's mental like i can still do it if i put my mind to it but you know it's it's hard sometimes but this is the end of the video like the video and subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching